Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's encode the logic. I hope you all are doing good. In this video, we are going to see about basic loop structure or iterative statements. So till now we have seen about sequential statements and selection statements. And also we executed multiple programs using these selection statements. And we know the selection statements are if, if else, if well, if else, and nested if. Using all these selection statements, we also executed multiple programs. I uploaded all those multiple example programs in my channel. So if you haven't watched it yet, please do check it and watch it. And in this video, we are going to focus on this iterative control statements. So basic loop structure or iterative statements. Python supports basic loop structures through iterative statements. So what is iterative statements? Iterative statements are decision control statements that are used to repeat the execution of list of statements. So what we have seen in the sequential statements, the sequential statements, a set of statements executed one by one. The execution of second statement will be happen only after the first statement. And the execution of third statement will happen only after the second statement, right? And also in the selection statement, based on the conditions, the statements will be executed, right? First, suppose if we want to execute set of statements repeatedly, nothing but iteratively, then we can do it by basic loop structures. So, and the Python support basic loop structures through iterative statements. The Python long ways supports two types of iterative statements. They are while loop and for loop. And in this video, we are mainly focused on this while loop. And in the next video, we will talk about this for loop. Okay, let's see the while loop. The while loop provides a mechanism to repeat one or more statements while a particular condition is true. So it is a mechanism. Whenever a particular condition is true, it repeats the statements. In the while loop, the condition is tested before any of the statements in the statement block is executed. See, uh, what happens was, see this flowchart. At first, the condition is checked. The condition is tested. If that condition is true, then the statements are executed. The statement block will be executed. If the condition is true only, then the statements will be executed. Otherwise, if the condition is false, the control will jump to the statement Y. Nothing but the immediate statement outside the while loop block. So if you see this uh, flowchart, at first the condition is checked. If the condition is true, this statement block will be executed. So the statement which is in the start of the body of the loop till the last statement in the body of the loop. And again, the condition will be checked. If the condition is true, then again, the statement block will be executed. And again, the condition will be checked. If the condition is true, the statement block will be executed. And again, 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 this process will go on. So this process will keep on going. If it is keep on going, then what it will be results to? It will results to an infinite loop, right? It will fall under an infinite loop. Now the question was, how can we stop this looping? So what we will do is, within the while loop, we always keep an increment or decrement statement. And this statement will help you to uh, stop the execution of while loop at some point. Okay. So this is the true block. And for suppose if the condition is false, then of course the while loop will not be executed and the statements after the while loop will be executed as we know. So let's see an example to understand the while loop much better. So if you see this example, I initialize i equal to zero and then while block while i less than or equal to 10. This i less than or equal to 10 is the condition. If that condition is true, yes, zero is less than or equal to 10, right? Yeah, the condition is true. So we will print i. Okay, let's know about this thing later. After printing, I want to increment i. i equal to i plus 1. So i equal to 0 plus 1. That was i equal to 1, right? Now again, the while loop will be executed. The condition is checked. Is 1 is less than or equal to 10? Yes. Okay, let's understand it simply. At first, my i equal to 0, right? I will check is 0 is less than or equal to 10. Yes, it was true. And I will print P of, let's keep P of 0 for the simplicity. And I will print the 0 and my i will become 0 plus 1. That was 1. So now my i was 1. So this is the pass 1. The first pass. And in the second pass, I need to check. Is 1 is less than or equal to 10? Yes, it was true. And I will print 1. And then later my i will become 2. Right? And in the third pass, I will check. Is 2 is less than or equal to 10? Yes, it's true. So I will print the 2. And my i will become 
three, right? And again, the while loop will be executed. So it's in the past four. So is three is less than or equal to 10. Yes, it's true. And we will print the three. And then I will be four, right? So in this way, we will execute the while loop. Okay, let's go to the last condition. What could be the last condition? Okay, let us say my i was nine. So I will check is my nine is less than or equal to 10. Yes, it was true. Then I will print the nine and my i will become 10, right? And that will be fall under past 10, right? So my i will be nine and I will print nine and then my i will become 10, right? And in the past 11, so I will check is 10 is less than or equal to 10. Yes, it's true. And I will again print this 10 and then later my I will become 11, right? Now I will again check this condition is 11 is less than or equal to 10. No, it's false. So the while loop will be stopped, right? And the further statements will be executed. So in this way, the while loop will be works. Okay, let's execute it in the ideally. So my I equal to zero. So I will keep while i less than or equal to 10 i will print i and i will increment the i so if you see as i said before to stop this uh, repeated action we need to keep an increment or decrement statement we kept an increment statement that was i equal to i plus one right so this is an increment statement okay after this i will execute Okay, let me run this program. So if you see, we printed zero and then printed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then buy. Fine. Okay, uh, let me keep i equal to 15 here. Let's see what will be the output. So if you see, only buy, just buy. Because is 15 is less than or equal to 10? No. The condition is failed, so it will jump to the statement after the while loop. That was by, so it printed by. Okay, let me keep uh, minus 5. And my condition was i less than or equal to only till 4. Yeah. Okay, let me run this again. So if you see minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then by. Right? So in this way, the while loop will works. Okay, now what is this print i comma and equal to single quotes? Okay, let's include this in our code and let's see what will be the output. I kept i comma and equal to and then the single quotes and there will be a space. If you see, there is a space between the single quotes. Okay, let me run this program now. So if you see, after minus 5, with the space minus 4 is printed and with the space minus 3 is printed and, and there is a space after minus 3 and there is a space after minus 2. So what is the conclusion? So this and equal to single quotes is mainly used to print the output in the same line. Even if you see, so in the previous case, we haven't used this and equal to single quotes, right? In that case, what happened? The every output is printed in the new line, right? But when we use this and equal to within the same line, all the outputs are printed. Okay, now let's write down the countdown blast off program. So the program is countdown blast off program. So what is this countdown blast off program? So what we do in any program or event? Okay, let's take the example of New Year itself. So what we will do at the night 12 p.m. Before the 10 seconds, we will count down the numbers, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we'll say Happy New Year, right? So for that situation, we need to write down the program now. Yeah, it sounds funny, right? Okay, now we need to write down the code for countdown blast off. Let's take a variable count. So we need to start counting from 10, right? We need to start counting like 10, 9, 8, right? So the numbers was decreasing. Okay, now we need to use a while loop. So what could be the condition? My condition was, I was counting the numbers from 10 to 1, right? So my count variable should be greater than or equal to 1, right? Till the 1, I need to count the numbers. Or else you can also keep like count should be greater than 0. This is also okay. Okay, let's keep count is greater than or equal to 1 itself. And after that, what we need to do? We need to print the count. 
Okay, let's print that. I need to print the count and let's keep end equal to. We can either use single quotes or double quotes. Let's keep double quotes this time and we need to include a space for sure. And then we need to keep an increment or decrement statement. So what is that statement in our case? In our case, what we are doing, we are decreasing, right? So 10, 9, 8, we are decreasing the count. So we need to use a decrement statement. Let's keep count equal to count minus 1. So this is the code snippet for the countdown. Now, after the countdown completed, so what we need to say? We need to say Happy New Year, right? Okay, let's print that. Let's print. Blast off. Happy New Year. Okay, let's say happy coding also. Yeah. So this is the code for the countdown blast off. Okay, let's run this. So if you see, it's a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then blast off happy new year, happy coding. So this is the program for countdown blast off. Okay. Now, as I said before, if we won't keep any increment or decrement condition while we are using a while loop, then that while loop will fall under an infinite loop. Okay. Now, what is this infinite loop actually was? Okay. Let's remove this statement and let's see how this will work. Okay. Now, let me run this program. So, if you see, the 10 is keep on printing. The 10, 10, 10, 10. So, so if you see, it was scrolling. And you, even if I want to open it, it was not opening. And if you observe, it was going on, going on. The 10 was going on. Right? So, in this way, the infinite loop will work. So, sometimes this infinite loop will uh, may cause the system to crash. Okay, let me close this now. So, now we have to click on close the program. So, Python is not responding. So, in this way, the infinite loop works. So, it will completely hang your laptop or your system. So, this is about while loop, guys. I hope you like this video. And in the next video, we are going to know about the for loop. And thank you for watching. Hey, folks. If you enjoyed this coding tutorial and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Share it with your fellow coding buddies, drop it comment with your thoughts or questions and of course hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. Your support means a lot and it helps our community grow. Happy coding!